Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. Today we're going to be looking at how we can create the video that you're looking at right now. We're going to be using the pen tool, first of all, in Cinema 4D, and we're going to be talking about the, um, the alternative to using the pen tool in Cinema 4D, because I don't know about you guys, but it's, it's kind of difficult to create nice curved corners using the pen tool in Cinema 4D. Um, obviously, it's really easy to create nice uh, straight lines, um, but how do we create those nice curved corners that you're seeing in this animation? Uh, we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator, creating our spline in Illustrator, importing into Cinema 4D. You may not even have to watch the rest of this tutorial based on the introduction. <laughs> you might know exactly what to do from here, but if not, stay tuned. Uh, here we go. Okay, so how are we gonna make the video we just saw at the beginning there? So first of all, we're gonna need a path, obviously, and then we are going to sweep that, and we're going to use our start growth and our end growth. But first we need our path. So you could use your pen tool, middle mouse click to open up your top view, and then you can just draw it out. So in our video, our path has nice curved corners. So something like that. We don't want sharp turns. We want those nice, those nice curved corners like that. Now to achieve that, in Cinema 4D is doable, but I think it's way too annoying and difficult. Now, if you guys know a better way, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know how to do it. Um, if you guys know a better way, let me know. But the only way I could tell of being able to do it would be pen tool, enable quantizing, and then basically, Maybe saying we'll go here. Is that turned on? No, sorry, I had it on. Now it's on. Enable quantizing turned on. And then if you want to get a nice curved corner, go to about the midway point between two lines on a grid. Make a point and then go to the exact same midway point. Hold down your mouse and do it like that. Now it's doable but it just seems like a big pain, really. I mean, yeah, you could do it all like this, and that would be fine. And some of you might not have Illustrator, so, you know, if you don't have Illustrator, then this is definitely the way to go about it. But uh, I'm gonna show you a much easier way um, to do that. So I'm just gonna go File New on this. And I'm going to jump into Adobe Illustrator, create a new document. And what I'm going to do is select my pen tool here. And I am going to start drawing out a random path. Not worrying about any corners. Now, you probably know where, if, you, if you've used Illustrator before, you probably know exactly where I'm going to go with this. So I'm not worrying about the corners right now. I'm just doing some random shape here. Uh, random enough anyway. I don't want it to be too random. <laughs> I want it to look a little bit nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down here and... Okay, so something like this. And now, hit A on your keyboard, and that's gonna give us these little dots. Select, hold down your left click on any one of them and drag. And now you can basically make the curve of the corners the same on all of the corners at the same time without having to draw them out inside of Cinema 4D. So you probably knew where I was going with that one. 
So I'm going to drag it, eyeball it. Where do I want it to be? Around there. Looks good about there. Cool. Okay, so now I want to import this into Cinema 4D. So save as. And we are going to save this into a folder that I've already created called AI Paths. And we're going to call this Path. And we want to set the version to Illustrator 8. If you leave it at Illustrator CC, you won't be able to import it into Cinema 4D. Okay, there. And now let's jump back into Cinema 4D. Let's go to File, Merge Objects, and we want to go to where we saved our Illustrator file and open that up. Click OK, and there we have it. Okay, so we got some weirdness going on here. There's a line there for some reason. So I don't know why that's happened. Let's see, just jumping back into Illustrator. Why has that happened? I don't know. Maybe, oh yeah, okay. Close spline is ticked here. So just untick that. And we want to center our path. Zero, zero, zero there on the X, Y, Z. And I want to set this to 90 degrees uh, on the P rotation. S on your keyboard to zoom into your, into your whatever, be it whatever object is selected in your uh, objects manager. And there we have it. So let's see what size this is coming in at. I'm just going to create a cube. S on my keyboard there again to zoom out. Just created this cube and I want to make my pass bigger than the cube anyway, because if it's not bigger than the cube, you know it's really small. So with the scale tool, I'm just going to scale that up to about there. And I'm going to delete off my cube. S on my keyboard, oh, select the object you want to fit to screen, S on your keyboard, it's not working, there we go, and okay, now, okay, so somehow my camera's changed, um, camera set to cursor mode, I don't know how that happened, I must have, um, I must have pressed some shortcut by accident, so I just put it back there to object mode. I don't know what shortcut I used by accident there. I wish I knew what it was, because that would be pretty handy. Um, okay, so we have our path, and now what we can do is we can create a sweep and put our path into it, and we want to create a rectangle spline and we are going to reduce the size of this we're going to eyeball it down to let's say 10 by 5 s on my keyboard that's a very handy tool very handy shortcut s on your keyboard to fit the whatever object is selected fit that to the screen so yeah i'm happy enough that i'm going to make that a little bit wider i'm going to go 15 on that and we want to add this rectangle to our sweep as a child. So we're basically telling this um, rectangle to sweep along this path. And if we do it in a different order, it's not going to work, as you can see. So undo that. We don't want to tell this path to sweep along the rectangle. We want to tell this rectangle to sweep along this path. So now we have something like this. I'm going to make this even thinner and less height as well. So that it just looks like there's more space in between our, so there's bigger gaps basically. Just a little bit wider and a little bit higher. And I want to introduce rounding to our rectangle. So select this rounding tick box here. NB in your keyboard to show our lines and I want to go less round on that so for radius say 0 0.5 let's say 0 0.7 on that cool so 
So let's see what this looks like. Okay. Now we want to create a floor and we want to go into our front view and make sure that our floor is touching the base of our sweep object. So just drag it down there, zoom right in so you're as accurate as possible. Just drag that down to the bottom, this bottom, the base of our object there. Middle mouse click to open a four way view and middle mouse click back in perspective view. Okay, so let's create a light and we're gonna bring that up here and maybe bring it over here. And we're going to add a shadow or uh, turn on area shadows for this light. And let's see what this is starting to look like now. Okay, so already it's looking pretty nice. Um, so what we want to do is create a material for our floor. Double click here, down here, materials panel, and we are going to open up this new material that we just created. We want to go to our color channel and we're gonna go for a dark gray. And we're gonna go for our reflectance channel. We're going to add a Beckman to that and we're going to bring down the brightness to about the halfway mark there. So let's add that to our floor and let's see what it looks like now. Okay, cool. So I want to bring my light up a bit along the Y axis because I don't want that massive specular highlight there visible in the camera. Okay, so I want to bring the light over here so we get our nice specular highlights along the rim of our object. Okay, that's better. So now we're getting these specular highlights along the rim of our object. So that's looking very nice. Okay, so now we just need to create a material for our object. So double click in the materials panel, open up the new material. Go into color and I'm going to go for this blue because this blue looks nice. Looks like it'll go nice with a gray. Blues tend to go nice with gray. Let's add that onto our sweep and let's see what we got. That is looking pretty cool. I would like to turn up the reflectance here just a little bit. Well, increase the brightness here so. It is more reflective. Yes. And we're almost finished. Oh, go into your sweep object and then we're going to create the animation. Go into the object tab. At start growth, you can bring this to 100% if you want your object to animate from left to right. But I actually want my object to animate from uh, from sorry, I want it to animate from left to right. I don't want it to animate from right to left. So I want it to go from the left to the right, like that. So bring the end growth to 0%, create a keyframe to frame 90, and bring the end growth up to 100% and create another keyframe. Let's go back and play that. So that's what it's looking like. And let's turn on our interactive render region so we don't have to keep clicking on the render button. And this is looking pretty cool already. Okay, so one last thing is we want to duplicate this sweep. So hold down control, drag it down, create a duplicate. Now press R on your keyboard to rotate the selected object. Bring your cursor over this red here. Now it's red because it's I, I want to rotate it along the using the x-axis. Rotate along the x-axis. So I'm going to hold down left click on my mouse, hold down shift after you press the mouse click. And then it's going to rotate in increments of 10 degrees. So bring that to 90. 
and zoom out a bit. Now, I'm just going to zoom in so that our start point and our end point are invisible or not on camera. Let's rewind that and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's the effect we are going for. So you can mess around with the lights if you want. I mean, you may not want the shadow going in this direction. I might just move that quickly. So maybe I want my shadow to be, I want my shadow to be going in this direction. So bring your light over here, your shadow will go back the way, see what that looks like. So already that's looking much better. Uh, we also want to turn on our ambient occlusion. So go to render settings and turn on ambient occlusion and you'll see the beautiful difference that, that makes. You can also turn down the roughness in your floor material, go into your reflection channel, put the roughness down to zero and then you get some nice smooth reflections there. Maybe have it at about three, so it's not too smooth. And we can go back to our render settings, go to our anti-alias scene, and set this to best and two by two to get rid of these jagged lines here. So it's looking very nice now. Okay, so that's it, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a lot. Feel free to render this out, um, and if you want to in increase the amount of time it takes to get from the start to the beginning, or from the beginning of the animation to the end, all you have to do is increase the amount of frames. Let's just say you want to go to 300 frames, double click, and then you simply select your sweep, both your sweep objects, highlight the keyframe here, and drag it to about frame 300 and that's going to slow down your animation. Okay, so that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.